Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. This means that I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. We need this today more than ever. Let's take a look. What do you do when things go wrong? Choose life or choose death. The choice is yours. Hi folks, what do you do when things go wrong? And I mean really wrong. You have a choice. You either choose life or you choose death. The choice is yours. So what do you do when things go wrong? And what to do when things go wrong? I mean really bad. What if everything you have been taught about the New Testament Jesus and Christianity is wrong? Why all the confusion? What is on purpose or is it a shifting baseline syndrome? Did we fail to seek the Father's heart? Uh-oh, heavy duty questions. Let's take a look and see where this leads us. I realize that for some this might all be Alicadabra or Sim Salabin, stuff you have never heard of. But you were always sure there was something not kosher. In other words, it is a privilege to discuss it today, for no matter what, people like to tell you how much they know about the Creator. I would go as far that no one entirely understands the Word of God. Whoa, that's heavy duty. Though there is one thing for sure, 2 Timothy 3 verse 16 to 17 in the complete Jewish Bible. All scripture is God breath and valued for teaching the truth, convicting sin, correcting faults and training in right living. Thus anyone who belongs to God may be equipped for every good work. Do you understand what I just read? That means that the Word of God, that is the one that is good for correcting and teaching and equipping you for very good work. When you listen on TV, you wonder, am I living in an intolerable world? A world that seems to cater to the rich and powerful the very people we continue to play dice with other people's lives. Geopolitical tensions are reaching a boiling point with the upcoming elections in the USA and also many other countries. If you have concerns, you're not the only one, my friend. The question is, is an antidote for modern life available? Has our whole life come to this? I want to fix now and I want it, I don't care how, as long as I get it. This seems to be the cry for many and from many people. They want it now. But the problem with now is, you might have to wait a little bit because even the COVID virus took a little while. It's a question even, can we even escape the digital noise, selfishness and stressors of modern life? 
Anxiety, worry, and stress afflict experience in the contemporary world. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, approximately 10% of the American population, or 24 million people, suffer from anxiety disorder. Experiencing anxiety does not constitute a disorder, contrary to ADD and the ORD, Obsessive Religious Disorder. We discussed this before, but in case you want to know more, we'll talk about it later. Some people might simply stay, start all over. With all that happened in 2020, many people want to start over and think about it. What about you? Are you re-evaluating everything that's going on in your life? Maybe you're right. Maybe you love photography. Or maybe you do arts. Or maybe you don't do anything, just a couch potato. Have you considered even your future decisions? Because whether we realize it or not, we are continually evolving, changing, growing, which I believe is healthy. One of the significant problems has never been clear. PMS versus PMS Central's question. Since the human brain decides in two basic modes, one is logical, carefully weighing costs and benefits and choosing the best option, and the other method is spontaneous, doing what feels right, and both have the merits. Now, people say, well, I live here on Earth or in this world, but let's take Earth. The Earth is a school for our soul. As we notice, life filled with tests. In other words, life is filled with tests and lessons, and they will train you to become who you are. Ephesians 1 verse 18, it says, I pray that he will give light to the eyes of our hearts, so you will understand the hope to which he has called you, what rich glories there are in the inheritance he has promised his people. Whoa, those are rich words, big words. Let's take them one at a time. The person that is talking here is Paul, the Apostle Paul. He had a very strong insight. He was not one of those first disciples that was called by Jesua HaMashiach, or as most people know him, as Jesus. He says, I will pray he will give light to the eyes of your heart. As you recall, Paul was the one that got a very bright light while he was on his way to Damascus, which we now know is the code name for the city where the disciples were the first century believers. And as he was on his way, he was thrown off his horse and he was left blind because he saw a huge, big light. And now he is praying after healing set in, he went years to the desert and got taught by God himself. He says, I pray that he will give you light to the eyes of your heart. And as I'm reading this, and as I'm talking about this, I say, I, prayer Caleb, I pray that he will give you the lights of your eyes of your heart, so you will understand the hope to which he has called you. There is a hope, there is a glorious hope. What rich glories there are in the inheritance he has promised his people. Folks, this is Father God Almighty, Abba, Father, El Shaddai. He has given us hope and promises in the tree of life. See, there was a problem originally in the Garden of Eden, and we took an assumption, a hypothesis, that we took a baseline. Whether you believe it or not, we need to talk on an even keel. So we took that for a moment. We take a moment in paradise where Adam and Eve were created. They were walking in the garden with God alone. They were there enjoying themselves and enjoying a garden as only a gardener can do. I love gardening myself. And I know that there are moments that you just be totally quiet, totally relaxed and so peaceful. And the birds are chirping and the animals are going and coming. And it's so beautiful. It's so peaceful. And then they got rudely interrupted by a snake, representing Satan. Is it true? Psst, psst. 
Is it true? And there he went, condemning people without them understanding the condemnation they run into. Because the condemnation was, they got locked out of that world of God, for God is spirit. And like most of us have been taught at school, universities, Sunday school, Bible school, or maybe no school, just the street, that somewhere, somehow, Adam and Eve goofed up. And somewhere, somehow, we ended up sinning. And some people even know that sin means they miss their goal. It's like shooting a gun and you miss, or shooting an arrow, a bow and arrow, and you miss. They blew it. But is that true? Adam and Eve, were they kicked out of the paradise? Or were they locked out of that spirit of God? In other words, there were several dimensions. God is an almighty God. When you think about how he created this, and we still haven't figured out after 2000 years with all our computer power, how in the world is it possible what God created? We haven't even figured out how our brain works. We know big parts. We know how to help people. But when it really comes down to the perfection of it, we don't know. We are guessing. And it's the same as the heart. When we have pain, pain and sorrow because of a pandemic, because of a loved one that passes away or is suffering right in front of us and we can't do anything, we yearn to help, we yearn to give him hope, we want to do something. That is what we got locked out of. Because God, in his power and his might, had created us so that we would be like God. We are like his image. So that we have a spiritual development. That is what Adam and Eve got locked out. The greatest and most beautiful aspect of the creation was to be like God. We are created in his image. To explain it simply, it's like a hologram. When the hologram is held on the hand and poof, all of a sudden there's a little fella looks like you. I will show it again. That is how God it's a created to be us. here in Las Vegas to present to you. Now I get invited to do keynotes across the globe. And while it's easy for me to be here in Las Vegas, it isn't always easy for me to travel across the world. And even when I do, I can't always speak the local language. Well, what if neither language nor distance mattered for me to deliver a fantastic keynote? What if technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted? Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. So first, I'm gonna put on my HoloLens 2 here, and then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's get started. First, let me introduce you to Mini-Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me, I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full size Japanese keynote. Render keynote. Hologram <laughs> As a hologram, but there is more to it to become a full living human being according his riches and his glory, because his glory is so much more powerful. I worship the God of our fathers and I'm a follower of the way in Acts 24.11. Isn't that a beautiful statement? I worship the God of our fathers as a follower of the way. And Yeshua HaMashiach, he 
opened that door. He opened the way. He was the example. He said, I worship the God of our fathers. So Jesus is my brother. He is the first one who reconnected with God, restorative justice. And so can you, and so can I. But you have to have the desire. And I have so much that I like to share with you. But I try to stay within the 15-minute realm because it is a lot that you have to digest. And I can only share with you that ready for success. Let's take a look at it again. When you're ready for success, things successful people do in the morning, have a virtual cup coffee. I hope that this virtual cup coffee helps. I hope that you enjoy life as well, just like I do. Because as I'm progressing, I'm learning. As I'm sharing with you, I'm learning because I'm preparing myself. The majority of this video goes to mental preparation. What can I share? How much can I share? Because it is God's Spirit that will teach you. But I can only sow the seeds. And as your desire maybe kicks in, your desire to learn to walk with God, that desire is important. You now have a choice to make. Are you choosing life or are you choosing death? Death is when you choose for Satan. And some people now say, oops, I got to do the elections. I'm not sure what to do. I can't advise you. I can only say, seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things shall be added unto you. God is an awesome God. He loves you. And remember, folks, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you. Bye for now.
Thank you.
Japanese with my unique voice signature. To do this, we use mixed reality technology to create my hologram and render it here live. Then we use Azure speech to text capability and English transcription to get my speech. Then use Azure Translate to get the, the speech into Japanese. And finally, apply
Thank you.